critical battles of the war in the islands directly north of Australia is mirrored in these Army Signal Corps pictures as American and Australian troops move forward in the Buna area to mop up the last remnants of Japanese resistance. With field pieces brought up, Allied troops deploy cautiously as every tree and every bush seems to hide a desperate Jap sniper. If any scout thinks there's a Jap in there, we let go. Orders are to clean out these suicide squadrons with no questions asked. It's kill or be killed in this primitive jungle warfare, as our soldiers know. And when the silence of death shrouds the Jap foxholes, Americans and their Aussie allies move in to take over another few yards of jungle. Jungle pitted with foxholes, holding sons of heaven, sacrificed to Hirohito's cause of vainglorious conquest. Captured Jap equipment is carefully studied, especially this ingenious version of a trench mortar, supposedly handled and fired by one man. American casualties were inevitable, but fortunately light. Native bearers help the medical corps, while those who can limp back alone for treatment. Along the trail, natives with an eye for profit opened wayside stands to provide the returning soldiers with a bracing pot of tea, and our boys go for it. The Army Medical Corps has done an amazing job in caring for wounded men among these jungle surroundings. They've saved many soldiers to fight again. The fighting here led directly to the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, when the Japs lost more than 20 ships and 17,000 men in an attempt to reinforce their garrison on this island. The Bismarck Battle will go down as one of the most important in the South Pacific War. MacArthur's airmen, as well as Australians, have shown the world the advantage of land-based bombers and fighters over enemy fleets. Our loss was but one bomber and three fighters. With more planes, men, and equipment arriving daily, victory is sure. The push is on to drive the Japs out of New Guinea quickly and start northward. We're on the road to Tokyo. Tokyo.